Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Following the Way of the Cross broadcast. I am Pastor Byram, and we thank you so much for joining us this morning on the broadcast. We're going to get uh, into our studies here shortly, but uh, first, just a few announcements um, I want to make. And um, I have uh, got in the studio here with me uh, Brother William Hagler again. Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Praise the Lord. And I've got my wife here joining us this morning again. Praise Good the morning, Lord. everybody. And um, we're getting ready to get back into Romans. And uh, we're going to be tackling verse 15 this morning. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements. We want to remind everyone of the upcoming meetings um, with Pastor Luke Pogue coming up. That's our next uh, event scheduled here at Crossline Church. Uh, he's going to be with us. September the 13th, he's going to be preaching both services, the 10 a.m. and the 6 p.m. And, um, you know, I was just watching Crossline Television before we went on, and he was... Um, preaching up a storm. He was ministering mm -hmm. uh, at the camp meeting that we had here in Houston. And, uh, boy, what a blessing he's going to be to, uh, you know, and, and I can't say enough about this brother. He's, he's, um, he's just on fire for God. It's going to be a great blessing to have him here. So uh, try to make it out to those meetings if you live here in the Houston area. Amen. If you Amen. live anywhere near driving distance. I know that we got some people already coming from Tyler. We've got uh, others uh, coming from south. And um, I, I just thank the Lord. It's going to be a great, great time in the Lord. Amen. Um, and uh, he will actually be joining us on the share which is the next day, that Monday following uh, he'll be joining us for, for a while there, and we uh, are looking very forward to it. Um, um, so before we get into the Word, anything I'm missing this morning, Heather, that you can think of? Um, no. Okay. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer, if we will. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this thank day, Lord. Thank Every you, day Lord. that we've got is, is, is a blessing from you, and we praise you, we're here to serve you and to, and to learn of you, Lord. And we just want to sit at your feet and learn of you today, Father. Thank we just you, ask that you would minister through us and to us, Lord, that you would correct our way of thinking, Praise God. that Hallelujah. we might think like you, Lord Hallelujah. God. You said your thoughts are not our thoughts, and our, our ways aren't your ways, but we want to be like we you, Lord. You, Lord. We praise you and we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. and amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we can't do anything without the Lord, ladies yes, and gentlemen, amen. and uh, that's why we, uh, we go to him for our every need. Amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Uh, Romans 6.15, Paul the Apostle, he would say, What then? Now he's asking a question, and obviously if you've watched this broadcast for any length of time, you know uh, that that's something we mention a lot, is that Paul taught people by asking questions. Um, in other words, when he wanted to teach somebody something, he would ask them a question. And, and listen, that always causes the human brain to think about something. So whenever we are asked a question, um, it causes our mind to engage. So right here, Paul says, what then? Question mark. Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? See, he put another question mark there. And the answer comes back, God forbid. <clears throat> now... This, this verse here it parallels with verse 2, um, where the Apostle Paul would say, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Well, the same thing is being spoken here. Now that he has explained uh, up to this point our salvation experience, really. Uh, Romans chapter 6 is one of the most powerful, powerful um, chapters in the entirety of the Word of God, and if you do not understand it, you are going to have problems serving God. Let me say that again. If you don't understand Romans chapter 6, you're going to have uh, issues serving God. And, um, you know, just because we are now in the dispensation of grace and uh, Jesus Christ, we have put our faith in Him as believers and um, in what he did on the cross of Calvary, that doesn't give us a license to continue living in sin. Um, meaning we are not to continue living in sin. In other words, because of what he did on the cross, we are now being pulled out of that sinful lifestyle. In other words, 
Um, I'm not going to continue to live in habitual acts of sin. That is against the will of God, ladies and gentlemen. The cross gave us power to be removed from sin, and that's what is being explained to the body of Christ all through the verses up to this point. Paul explained to us that we no longer live in Adam, but we now live in Christ, number one, and he explained to us that the old man has been crucified. Listen, if somebody dies, they can't much continue doing anything, can they? Right. So That's we can't right. continue living in sin uh, just so grace can abound. Listen, nothing could be further from the truth. Don't buy into that lie. Understand that we have been set free from the bondage of sin, Amen. of the sin nature. Amen. That's what yes. Paul's explaining uh, through these uh, portions of scripture here. So he's asking the question um, here. Uh, if the believer is attempting to live by law, he's actually saying that what Jesus Christ did on the cross is not good enough for you. That's right. If you continue to operate within the sphere of law, the government of law, as we talked on the last broadcast, then you're, you're saying to God, why did you even come and die on the cross of Calvary? You're saying to God, I can do it. And listen, we can't do it, and that's what we have to understand is that we can not do it. That's important. Uh, a dead man can't do anything. Why do you think the Lord reckoned us dead? Right. He's trying right. to teach us something. He's trying right. to tell us something that a dead man just simply cannot live for God. We have to have power. We have to be anointed of the Holy Spirit to even have a proper prayer life, to even have a, a proper giving life, a proper whatever. Uh, you fill in the blank. Whatever we do as Christians, now that we've been born again, we have to have a power <laughs> source to do that. Otherwise, we're just we're playing a religious game. So you mean that you know just because you know I can't go pray more or I can't read more of the Bible to keep my sanctification, Pastor? Is that what you're trying to say? That's right. You can't do it. You you're not going to. Um, and and let me address that this way, brother. The sanctification process was brought out totally and completely by the Holy Spirit. We had nothing to do with it. That's right. You can't, um, we were 110% sanctified the day that we got born again. That's right. But there is a process that goes on that takes place in my life every day that we call progressive sanctification. And progressive sanctification, what it is, it's God molding me, changing me, and shaping me into his likeness on a daily basis. So sanctification is really twofold. It, number one, it's a process that takes place every day, and it's also a position. That's right. Sanctification is positional. That's My right. position in Christ, I have to have that um, I have to have that title of sanctified. That's right. Otherwise, I can't be in Christ. Heather, you want to comment on that? You know, I think it's important to note that when we're talking about things that, that uh, Paul would say leading up to this verse is he's a preacher of righteousness. He's explaining that, you know, uh, in verse 13, he's saying, don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness, remembering that you're dead. Uh, just kind of piggybacking on some things that you've just said. But then leading up to, and then he says, what then shall we sin because we're not under law but under grace? When we start talking about you're not sanctified or pleasing God based on your performance. Um, this isn't a performance-based religion as all these others are. You don't say so many Hail Marys and you please God. It's not like that. This is by simple faith in what he has done, that not that I should boast, not that any man should boast. We're glorying in the cross. We're glorying in Amen. what it is that he has done. But when you start preaching against works-based religion, people start saying, so you're saying I can just do whatever I want? I can just live however I want? And so it's important to note that's why he asked the question. He asked the question to get the attention of those that were listening to him saying, I'm going to ask the question to cause you to think a little bit. Mm -hmm. right. So he asked the question, are we, are we able to sin as much as we want because we're not under law but under grace? And then he answers it by saying, God forbid. And, uh, and you know, God forbid, when you look at that phrase, Heather, it, it actually means 
away with the thought. Let that be so far from me. Yeah, let that thought be so far from us. In other words, um, you know, our, we got to remember, ladies and gentlemen, that our God is holy. That's right. That's right. That's and right. Um, He's the highest level of holy. We can't, we can't even think as high, um, as holy as he is. We can't think that high. And he can not have anything to do with sin. So anything that um, we do as believers, um, we have to come God's way or we can't come any way at all. That's right. That's and right. God, God made a process. He legally sanctified us. He legally justified us by... The, the, it, you know, it's conditional. I, I preached a message one time. I believe it was called sanctification is positional. Yeah. And it's also conditional uh, because it's conditioned upon where our faith is. And if our faith is in anything other than the cross of Calvary, then that constitutes us uh, living in failure is what it's going to constitute. We are going to fail. It is not just if we fail. But when. It's when we fail. That's We're right. going to fail. Yes. <clears throat> so with that said, the, the, the more that we will place our faith in the cross of Calvary, the better off things are going to be. Paul said right. we walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, I'm not walking by what I'm seeing. So... As it regards getting back to the to the understanding, I guess I got on a little rabbit trail there. But Paul is saying, "Listen, don't let let sin be the furthest thing from your mind." That's right. Because you've been set free from it. It's important to know. I mean, when we're talking about something like law versus grace, and we're talking about uh, not living under the dominion of sin because we're under grace, there's a fine line there between uh, not being condemned when you slip up, being under condemnation and realizing your position in Christ and also realizing the, the condition of your heart and how God is trying to bring that up to the same level, so to speak. I mean, I'm not saying we're ever going to attain, but his, his desire is if our position is here in Christ, he would want us to continually be conformed to go. his image. Right. We're never going to attain to that but just because we slip up that's not an excuse to say well um that's okay uh god is never pleased with sin and it always separates and sin always has consequences those those things you will not escape when you're in this flesh but your your uh your mindset where your focus is are you focused on self are you focused on your performance, uh, your ability to not sin? I hear so many pastors, and I think it's great that they preach against sin because there's so many that don't, but then they never tell you how to not live under the dominion of sin. And the truth is, it's probably because they don't know. Uh, they don't right. understand the sin nature. Nobody's ever told them that or explained these things to them. Well, I think it's not only un not understanding the sin nature, but a lot of pastors don't understand the sanctification process. Exactly that yeah. too. Because you know, it's it, we're, we're always we're everybody's born with a sin nature. Mm -hmm. You know, then when we come to Christ, we're given the divine nature. Right. You know, and and it's our choice as Christians to which to allow which one to rule over our life. Yeah. Once you're born again, we should want that divine nature to take over. We should not want to sin. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that's why you know it's that divine nature that you just spoke of that causes um, it causes us to want to do right. That's right. And it causes us to not want to sin anymore. And that's what Paul meant in Romans six and two when he said. What shall we say? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Once again, God forbids us. Why? Because what, what Christ did on the cross of Calvary was, was so powerful that it broke the dominion of sin in our lives. That's right. That's right. And, and so we, we don't have to allow sin to dominate our lives if we choose to do that then we need to re-examine where our faith is at that's right uh because when we attempt to live and and this is why paul brought the word law in here because we are not under the law but under grace 
And he brought that word law in here because it's so important. If our faith is not in Calvary, it's in law. <laughs> That's right. There, there's That's no right. other way to look at it. And what law does is the Bible tells us that law in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that law gives strength to sin. In other words, it gives power to the sin nature. It fuels it, if you will. That's the right. law does. And it causes a sin revival in believers. But one of the things I, I, I feel strongly why the Apostle Paul was, was almost repeating himself somewhat here is because there's, there's a multitude out there that have, um, they've moved off into this hyper grace movement. That's right. And, and this is what that, that mindset is right here. They think that, that grace is of such a, such a great magnitude that we should not even be concerned uh, about how many times we sin. And um, that's, listen, whenever a believer sins, ladies and gentlemen, you should become heart sick. That's right. You, you, That's right. Whenever you sin, it should make you go, oh, I failed God again. And, and, and then that should bring forth fruits for repentance. That should bring forth godly sorrow. Uh, when we do sin, we take that thing before the Lord. And then he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the hyper grace era today that um, I'm my wife and I, and I'm holding up for... For those of you in um, Radio Land, I'm holding up a copy of our four DVD set series of where we covered the, the Hyper Grace era. You need to be warned and you that's need right. to be informed that's about right. uh, this dangerous doctrine. And, and that's why we this is available on our website. I encourage everybody. Well, that's to. just like you preach Sunday there, Pastor. You, you know, we have to have the knowledge of the Word. Mm -hmm. Because without, without the knowledge of this word the bible the living word we we can't we can't live that divine nature by allow it to rule that's right because we need that knowledge mm -hmm. and i would like to say you know comments which said you know we preach that you can't live by law mm -hmm. and you can't but we got to remember the law still is important because mm -hmm. the reason we don't live by it is because we live through jesus christ who already fulfilled the law that's right he, he fulfilled the law in totality, which gave mankind um, power over the dominating sin nature within us. And um, no one was able to fulfill the law except Jesus because Jesus was not born like we were. That's right. He was born without a sin nature. And, That's and, right. and believe it or not, ladies Amen. and gentlemen, there's a group of people out there um, that um, they are claiming that Jesus uh, went down into hell and had to fight the devil down there and defeat him and be born again in hell. And um, there, there's a group of people that actually teach that nonsense. And, and listen, sin was defeated on the cross. Jesus right. didn't have to go down and do anything. Uh, the Bible says that he led captivity captive. Um, and and he released all those who were, who died in faith. That's right. And um, you know the 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 question to every believer, I think that needs to be asked is: Is there sin in my life? Number one. And if yes. there is sin in my life, that sin has to be dealt with. That's right. And and that sin can only be dealt with by the precious blood of the Lamb. That's right. And if we try to take our sin and move over into law to overcome it, which is what we do. That's, that's what is, you're right. We, we, <laughs> we take and, and we, we literally take our sin and we don't deal with it through the cross of Calvary. We don't deal with no. it through the blood. We, we try to say in our minds, well, I can overcome this. I, I'm going to stop cussing. That's right. I'm going to stop smoking. That's right. I'm going to stop. Well, listen, you just promised to fail when you said that because you made a law. You said, I'm going to. Listen, deliverance has to come through the cross. It, it has to come by God's power, by God's spirit working in you. You cannot deliver yourself. This is why 
the 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 celebrate recovery doesn't work. This is why AA does not work. This is why drug rehabilitation will not work. This is why Christian counseling will not work. Maybe you've got problems today in your marriage. Listen, if you're taking it if in your in your own hands and you're trying to deal with it yourself through personal effort and personal willpower, listen, you're going to fail. That's right. You're going to fail. Listen, there is only one power, and, and the Bible calls that power deutimus. That Greek word for power is deutimus, and it means miracle-working power, and that's what Christ gives when our faith is in the cross. If our faith is not in the cross and it's in self, it, it's real simple, ladies and gentlemen. God made this gospel there is simplicity in Christ, the Bible says. That's right. And, um, you know, with that said, the simplicity there is something we got to hang on to because we can get caught up in, in all of man's wisdom today, which most of the church is caught up in that. Man's wisdom, man's ideology of how to live for God. And understand that, um, you know, Paul the Apostle is is telling us here that there has been made available to us power. Not only have we been crucified with Christ, but there has been power made available to us that we can live for God and have an abundant life in Christ. That abundant life consists of an extraordinary life, a superior life. Listen, God blesses this Christian walk if our faith is anchored properly in the cross. That's right. He blesses right. it. He blesses it. You know, just a minute ago, I heard uh, William say something about, you know, how the law hasn't been done away with. Um, you know, it still is just righteous and holy and necessary. Uh, one thing I think people don't realize when you're living under grace instead of under law is that grace actually requires um, more of a sanctified, set-apart life than living by law would. Yeah, that's right. So... Even though it's not in the Ten Commandments, I've been walking down the street and uh, been coming into the church here, and there's trash out in the parking lot, and walk past it, and the Lord say, pick that up. Nope. And I would say, that's not mine. Yeah. And, and, and still feel led to go pick it up anyway, regardless. There's a... Am I making sense? Yeah, Heather, you know, God, uh, he... When Jesus came in his <clears throat> earthly ministry here, he raised the standard. That's right. That's he right. didn't. He didn't. Uh, he didn't say, "Thou shall not kill, thou shall not uh, steal, thou shall not lie, thou shall honor." Listen. Well, what he said was, he says, "I say unto you, whomsoever looks at a woman, he's already committed adultery in his heart." Just using that for an example. But he raised the standard of the law. Well, he raised the standard, I believe, because people thought, well, I've never uh, committed adultery or I've never stolen. I'm good to go. That's right. And what he did was say, if you've even thought it, it's as though you've already done it. Why? Why would he do that? Listen, that shows us his standard of, of righteousness exactly. and holiness. That's now, right. he, he and, and the, the thing is, is I think he's always trying to point us to him in every word that he spoke. When he presented that to them, he was not trying to say there's um, a higher thing for you to attain because we can't attain it. That's, That's why right. he went to the cross. But what he was saying was, I, him, him personally, he never sinned, not in word, thought, or deed. He not only never did anything sinful, he never thought anything sinful. We can't even come to that place because we have a sin nature. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. and see, you know, what, what, what he was doing there is when, when we think about um, the, the righteousness and the standard that, that Christ set, he set, and, and, and listen, when we think about the holiness of our God and the righteousness of our God and what it took to pay the price for sin, we ought to automatically see that drinking alcohol is wrong. That's right. We ought to automatically see that Halloween is wrong. That's we right. ought to automatically see that smoking is wrong. We ought, all the things that, that <clears throat> cause us to fail 
we ought to automatically see that those things are wrong. That's I mean, right. when we look at the holiness of God and the righteousness of God, um, God can't have any part with sin. I'll say it again. Um, we have to understand that our God is a thrice holy God. That's right. He is holy, holy, holy. And um, so the Bible also teaches us, ladies and gentlemen, that we are to abstain. We are to depart from any appearance of evil. That's right. That's right. Any appearance of evil. It doesn't just say uh, a little bit. There's no such thing as a little lie. Uh, a lie is a lie. I've heard people say that, well, I just, uh, I told a white lie. M listen, there's nothing white about it. It's all black. <laughs> it's all darkness, ladies and gentlemen. A lie is a lie, um, you know, wh whatever it may be. Well, I just told them this. You should have told them the truth. That's right. Because your God is holy. Your God is righteous. And, and I know that I'm stepping on some toes here, but you've got to understand I'm not called to please men. I'm called to, to tell you the truth in That's love right. and share the truth with you. And the truth is that every Christian out there needs to depart from evil. And the way you do that is by not self-will or self-strength or self-power. The way you depart from it is begin to place your faith in the cross of Calvary and let him deliver you. Uh, God has brought me in my personal walk a mighty long way. Yes. And um, I, I thank the Lord that, that, you know, there's things in my life that I still have to take before the Lord. Um, right. I, nobody never, there was never a man that ever walked perfect on this earth. No, there never um, will be, Pastor. And there never will be, exactly right. So we've got to keep faith anchored in the cross Otherwise, we are going to fail. And even, even Job, when you look at the story of Job, who was, he was a picture of sanctification. Yes. And, you know, God said there's not a man like him around. And as Satan came to ask permission to destroy Job, and God gave him permission. And, and do you know what God did through that process? He purified Job. He was sanctifying him. Yes. He was making him more like the image of Christ. Just, that's exactly I mean, that's, what was taking place. You know, that's place. what he's doing with us every day. You know, as believers, when we come to Christ, you know, his main goal is to make us into his image. Yeah, that's right. And I think a lot of reason why people stick on law, because it's easier to try to live by the law. Mm -hmm. And notice I said try. Because we will never, as believers or as flesh, be able to live by that law. We, we just can't do it. Yeah. Because, like you said, Christ raised that standard to make sure that we know that we have to live through him. Mm -hmm. We have to live our lives as believers through Christ. Amen. Because without living our lives through Christ, we can't do it. Yeah. The Bible says... For by grace you are saved through faith and not of yourselves. So once again, there's nothing we could do to add anything to our salvation experience except believe. That's right. As a matter of fact, Jesus would say something that's so very important that every believer should grasp. He would say, um, if you want a work to do, he says, here's a work to do. Believe on him in whom he sent. That's because right. God knows that you're going to have a hard enough time trying to keep believing. That's right. Listen, there is a fight for the faith. I've said it a hundred times and I'll say it again. If you're not fighting for the faith, you're not going to stay in the faith. This is something that's got to listen. And it's a good fight. Paul said, he said, it's worth fighting for. That's right. It's worth fighting for. That's right. Because the, the devil is not going to quit unfortunately no as a matter of fact if you're not living for the lord and you're just playing church and maybe you're sitting in church every week and 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 you're just uh you're you're half asleep and you're you're playing a religious game with god you're putting in your pew time so your hiney won't burn in hell understand god already knows the heart that's right that's and right. and satan doesn't give that person any trouble at all that's right 
what the ones that Satan is concerned with are the ones that are filled with his spirit that are baptized in the Holy Ghost and those that are making an impact on right. uh, his kingdom. Right. And those are the ones where he is going to try to deter your faith. He's going to try to pull you away from the faith. And um, he's going to try anything he can. Listen, he's constantly probing, trying That's to find right. that spot where maybe you have a crack in your armor. In other words, where you're not trusting in the cross of Calvary. There's a place where you're not trusting in in the cross and um you know that that's a bad thing ladies and gentlemen that, too that is. you've got to understand that god is god can only work through us trusting him exclusively i listen when i got the message of the cross when i finally got the truth i continued to fail that's right <laughs> and i didn't know why I continued to go, wait a minute, yes, this ain't working. I, and ladies and gentlemen, I was writing study guides on. I had a head knowledge. I was writing study guides on Romans chapter 6 already, but I was still failing the Lord. That's right. And I couldn't, I, I'm like, man, I, everything I'm doing here doesn't add up because I'm still failing, although I see what's laid out in Scripture. That's right. To be true. But it it was it was then when I got real with God and I got serious about what was taking place that God began to show me where I was trusting at. And and when I began to finally get it and finally place my faith in the cow in the cross of Calvary for every need, victory began to show up in my life. That's right. Peace began to roll in my life like That's a right. river. And listen, it's not until you are or the Holy Spirit has has crushed you and he has taken you to the end of yourself that you're really truly going to get it. That's right. You've got to trust right. him exclusively or, or the Holy Spirit, he's, he's constrained to work in your life the way he wants to when our faith is not anchored properly is what I'm saying today. So well, I'd like to make a comment. But go you ahead. Said, as you was talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, I also believe that even those that are seeking the Holy Spirit, seeking to truly be filled with mm -hmm. their hearts, you know, Satan is Satan is such a deceiver. You have to, because, I mean, I've heard of, of, of people trying to receive the Holy Spirit for years and years and years, and then just be at home one day and all of a sudden start speaking in tongues, yeah. speaking in another language. Mm -hmm. You know, the Holy Spirit is always with you at salvation. He's there. But he's waiting for your heart to truly open up to him to fill you with it, to, to fill you, to mm -hmm. baptize you in him, mm -hmm. to give you. Because being baptized with the Holy Spirit is not nothing you can do yourself other than putting your faith in Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross and having faith to give the Holy Spirit the room to work in you. Yes. And, you know, um let me say this about the baptism just um, because it is it, something you've got to seek for. That's right. It's something you've got to continually seek for if you don't have it. Um, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit um, it, it is something that I don't see. It, it's being taught on uh, enough in the modern church because... Yes, yes, that's true. You know, there was 120 in an upper room. Um, on the day of Pentecost when God poured out his spirit upon 120 there and the Bible records that they all spake in other tongues as the spirit gave yeah, utterance yeah. so um, that gift is a second work of grace that's right that gift is not something you receive at the salvation experience I could go through uh, all the scriptures and prove that to you. That's right. Uh, but for the essence of time, it's something you need to seek for. That's right. Um, it's not something that's just going to happen. It's something you need to you need to 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 let God know that you want this gift, and and He'll give it to you. And He'll give it to you. He He desires to give it to you. As a matter of fact, you will do you will do very little for God without it. I that's can right. say that that's much. Right. You will do very little good. And um, so getting back to Romans 6 and 15. Yes, we got way away from it. <laughs> if we abuse this doctrine, ladies and gentlemen, of grace, if we abuse that in any 
shape or form whatsoever, then we're going to frustrate the grace of God. That's right. That's right. If you are in hyper grace or whether you are in law, really, um, you can either be in license or you can be in law as it regards where you're at with God. And um, listen, one is duty and one is disrespectful. <laughs> That's right. Let me say that. One is duty and one is disrespectful. Oh, yeah. And you got to understand that you've got to stay in the middle of the road. The middle of the road is, is by grace and faith. God has provided. God has provided. That is one of, the, one of the names of our God in the Old Testament, Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider, right. and he That's provided right. a sacrifice for us. Um. You know, God is very little concerned, and I want to address this this uh, this hyper grace, and and it you know this hyper grace it, it falls into so many other dangers. Um, number one, it it'll 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 lead you right off into the word of faith. That's right. Where you think that you can all of a sudden speak things into existence, that you can create things. Uh, with your mouth and that you're a little God of some sort. It'll lead right off into that and it'll also lead right off into the prosperity mess. The prosperity gospel, it'll also lead you right into that. Why? Because uh, you think grace is so great. Listen, God is very little concerned about you having a two-story house, <laughs> two or three cars in the driveway, a bass boat, a summer home. That's God right. is very little concerned about that. Right. If you have those things, definitely if you're not doing His work, uh, praise God. If you then you're blessed. But God is very little concerned about you. What God's purpose in your life is, is for you to produce fruit, for That's you right. to give That's yourself right. over to the will of God, present your body a living sacrifice, and allow God to work through you and produce fruit through you. God is not. Listen, some people that we've got this mindset, oh, I, I've got, I'm blessed, man. I've got this and I've got all these material possessions. God ain't concerned with that at all. And, and listen, God didn't give that to you. That's right. Let me say that. God didn't get, listen, God is very little concerned about this prosperity mess that's being taught to people. God wants you blessed, but he's only going to give you as much as he can trust you with. That's right. That's right. Let me say that. He'll only give you as much as he can trust you with. And listen, a lot of times those things in this world, uh, Jesus said it is, um, he said it's, it's um, I'm thinking of the scripture here, the, the camel that goes through the eye of a needle. He said it's harder for a rich man to enter in the kingdom of heaven. Right. That's that's right. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, the, we've got to understand that these, these ditches that I call hyper grace and, and legalism or law, whatever it may be, those are some traps that the devil has set out there. As a matter of fact, this, this hyper grace issue um, is, it, it really is... Um, it's a slap in the face to the grace of God is what it is. But on the comment on your the camel through the eye of the needle, it, you know, I'll go back to that scripture because it came to me as you were saying that. You know, the, the rich man came up to Jesus Christ and said, I have done this. I have done this. I, you know, he said a lot of eyes. Mm -hmm. And then when Jesus Christ said, go sell all that you have and follow me. Yeah. The rich man bowed, ducked his head and walked off. Yeah. Because they can't do well, it. The rich man had <laughs> had a lot of treasure. A lot of treasure. And um, you know, the uh, one of the things that he would say to our Lord is that, you know, Lord, I have kept this since my birth. I have kept this law or that law. Right. And and see, that's that's the mindset of of the Christian today. I I have done this or I have done that. It ain't about what you have done. Uh, what you have done for the Lord um, will not earn you one red cent in heaven. What you have done for the Lord um, has to be done by him right. uh, for it to be rewarded. In right. other words, God has to conceive something first. And, 
And, and can I stress the importance of following the will of God today? If That's you right. are, if you are, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you are following the will of God, then anything God does to you will have to be birthed by Him, conceived by Him first, then birthed, and then brought out by His power and Spirit. Otherwise, it's something that, that God will never honor. He, he'll, it'll be burned up in the fire That's right. if it's not brought out by Him. And um, Well, I see... I look at it this way too, as believers, and, and I, I'm 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 bad about this myself. I was bad about this until I came to the cross. But we have to we have to understand that if you're, we're not saying that reading the Bible is unimportant. We're not saying praying is unimportant. We're not saying doing works is unimportant. We're saying you have to do them for the right reasons. To do something for the Lord, the Lord has to do it through you. Not you doing it so that you look better for God. Because that's all you're doing. You're trying to make yourself look better and you can't do it. Right. You know, when, 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 when we say, you know, you can't pray more or read the Bible more to be sanctified, that's what we're saying. You can't do that for sanctification. Mm -hmm. You have to have faith in Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross. You, when, when you put your faith there, and, oh Lord, if I feel the Holy Spirit, when you put your faith in Christ and what he has done, you're going to want to do that more. Yes. The Holy Spirit is going to lead you to do that more. Mm -hmm. He's going to lead you to pray more and seek his face more and, and, and speak with the Lord. He's going to lead you to be more into his word, the living word, and learn more about him. That's right. Bro. That, that's, what, that's what we need to, 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 to do. Not, not to do it for, for sanctification, but to do it because the Lord has led us to do it. Yeah, the Lord... Um... <clears throat> he's going to lead you to the cross every time, ladies and gentlemen. And um, that's the only place uh, that we can receive anything from God. That's the only place that God can be pleased with anything. Um, it's like uh, we, we had talked the other night in the story of Genesis when Enoch, when we look at his life, he was somebody that walked with God. He was uh, somebody that pleased God and he witnessed for God. Right. And and those things, I can assure you, they were brought out by God and not by him. Um, so as it regards the problem with all mankind, it's self. That's right. Self That's right. is the problem. Self is always seeking his own glory. That's right. And the most, the worst kind of self there is is a religious self. That's right, self-righteousness. Um, we got to humble ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Praise the Lord. Praise so the Lord. Beware of the hyper-grace error. It, it is something that will destroy your walk. And also beware of falling back into legalism. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me say this today. Um, if you are somebody that's operating in one or two of these things and, and you see yourself failing in your Christian experience, you need to understand something. You've got to come back to the cross of Calvary. That's right. That's, that's the right. only place to that's live right. for God is at the cross. And, um, you know, uh, the more we walk with the Lord and the more we understand this great message that he's given us, uh, the easier it's going to be. God's people today are being destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's right. And it's the knowledge of the finished work of the cross that we're in lack of. And, and this ministry is doing everything it, it, it can to uh, bring back this gospel message. That's right. And uh, we're preaching the gospel out of this uh, ministry 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's and, right. Um, we're doing That's everything right. we can. We're about uh, getting to the end of our broadcast today, ladies and gentlemen. And um, Can I make one more comment, though, there, Pastor? Sure. We, like you said in the beginning, as believers, we just need to remember to know that you are your faith. Because a lot of believers don't know if their faith is truly in the cross. Mm -hmm. But to know that you, you're either in a trial or coming out of a trial and going right back into another trial. Because like you said, God is always going to build our sanctification. In order for him to do that, he's going to put us through trials mm -hmm. or allow us in trials. And if your faith is anchored in the cross and what Jesus Christ has done, you will be in a trial. 
Well, God knows where our faith is. Right. And he's going to let us see where it is. That's right. Through those trials. And, um, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's where we've got to rest in the finished work of Calvary is that's the word right. I want to use. Um, you know, God made this world and this heaven and earth. He made it in six days. On the seventh day, he rests and called it a Sabbath. We know now through the New Testament that Jesus Christ is our Sabbath of rest. That's and right. um, that that's is right. where Amen. we're going to stay, right there. Uh, let's continue to pray for the Crossline Television Network. Right. And uh, we we ask for your prayers sincerely, ladies and gentlemen. We ask for yes. your your Hallelujah. financial support of this ministry to help us. We we are still, I think, presently right now, we're still about forty eight hundred dollars short of our gold uh, uh, on this past shareathon. So, if you can help us out in any way, there, we sure uh, would appreciate yes. it. It is much needed to help us. Uh, meet this goal of 10k a month at least right now we're we're endeavoring to go further we really need um, to get on the satellite dishes the glory star satellite but um, it takes a lot of money to keep the bandwidth going and um, to keep things up and running um, i had a gentleman actually ask me yesterday i believe it was um, he had asked uh, the question well what happened to the video on demand on the Roku channel and um, as many of you may know we had to take the video on demand off simply because we don't have the funds that we the money uh, that's coming in is just not quite enough unfortunately to cover uh, that video on demand so um, we had to remove it to help uh, save some of our bandwidth we're just not making the money to cover it so but as soon as we start uh, making that you know that gap up we'll we'll be more than happy to put it back up but we uh we desire to take the gospel to the world ladies and gentlemen that's right and uh we uh are endeavoring to do all we can to do that so be a part of what god is doing here that's right at the crossline television network crossline radio it's a 24 7 blessing i don't know that's right um of of many networks out there that are preaching this gospel like this 24 hours a day seven days a week as a matter of fact, right. I don't think there is any. And um, we thank the Lord for what he's doing. Uh, remember our meetings with Pastor Luke Pogue, September the 13th. Then he'll be here for share the 14th, 10 a.m., 6 p.m. services here at Crossline Church. And uh, we'll be coming back at you live tomorrow morning. We're going to continue our study in the book of Romans. God richly bless you all. Love you. Have a blessed day in the Lord.